Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at some automation tools and techniques that can help with your workflow in FL Studio. If you're completely new to this and you don't know what automation is yet, simply check out my beginner's guide, which I've linked up here and in the description. That video will walk you through some more of the fundamentals. I'm also giving away five copies of FL Studio and there's still a little bit of time left to win. So check the description to find out how to win one of those as well. Anyway, without further delay, let's get right into the video. I'll be showing a few different tools and techniques, so if you have seen one, you can skip ahead using the chapter markers and find something more uh, sort of interesting for you. But the first thing I want to show is the brand new automation editor, which has been added in this new 20.9 free update. If you do have FL Studio, grab that lifetime free update and you can use this incredible new tool. So I have this strings channel that I'm affecting using an EQ. Let's take a quick listen. And I'm just using this EQ to just sweep out some of the high frequencies like this. So I'd like to control this with an automation. If I right click, create automation clip and adjust some of these values, say at the start, it's low. And then it sweeps out and reveals those high frequencies as the mix progresses. Now, this is OK, but to get control over this, you have to zoom in quite far and it's just annoying, it's quite clunky, it's always been a bit of a problem. So there's this new automation editor. At the top of the automation clip, double left click, and you get this brand new window here. This can be further expanded by pressing enter or by dragging from the bottom corner here. What makes this amazing is that you can zoom in. So there's a few tips and tricks here, I guess. If you hold shift and scroll, you can zoom in on any part of the automation clip. Or if you just scroll normally, you can sort of zoom in horizontally and vertically by holding Alt or just by scrolling in naturally. But I prefer holding Shift and zooming in to a particular point. This new editor offers so much more control so you can snap things in exactly to the grid if you have snapping turned on here, or you can turn it off or press Alt to uh, position the points wherever you like. But I like that it's very easy to snap it into an exact number of bars or beats, just like a normal automation clip, it's a right click to add a point. If you press shift and right click, it will snap you onto wherever the automation clip is. And of course you can adjust all of the tensions and right click and choose a different mode. Uh, there's all that normal stuff that you'd expect. I'll press enter again to make it a bit smaller and show you a few more features. I was going to make a full tutorial for this, but it's actually quite self-explanatory. You've got the envelope mode or you can press LFO and you have an LFO and you can change all of the usual qualities that you'd expect, the tension, the speed and whatnot. One of the key features, something that's really important for me at least, is that when you have tons of different automation clips in a project and when you're getting a little bit lazy with naming and organizing and all that stuff, sometimes you can lose track of what an automation clip is actually uh, affecting. So here you can just go down to the target link section, press this button and it just pulls open the parameter or the plugin that's being affected. And if I press this button one more time, it just shows you which control is being affected. And it also pulls open the mixer channel that that effect or plugin is loaded on. You can also add more targets. So you can have the automation clip affecting multiple different parameters at the same time. This is not something I tend to do. So if I show you that here, you can add a, let's say a reverb. I'll pull this over here. If I press plus, and then I just adjust that parameter, press plus again. Now this automation clip is affecting both the filter and the reverb at the same time. This new tool comes in particularly handy when working on very small automation clips. So it's very common on say a bass to sidechain just using a simple volume automation. So take a listen and a look, you'll see it here. We're just side chaining using Fruity Balance. So whenever there's a kick, we're just reducing the volume of the bass. It's a very simple but also effective way to do side chaining. If you want to get control of this, you usually have to zoom in and it is pretty tedious creating new points. It's not that bad, but it can be difficult if you really want to be a perfectionist about it and get it sitting where you want. Now, double left click, just open up and you can add new points, you know, with a right click like usual, and you can adjust this. I'd probably say delete that, adjust the tension, and you can get it to match your kick perfectly. And of course, you can press enter and get even more control. Now, I'm guilty of this in all sorts of softwares. I'll usually be adjusting things very small on the screen, and then I remember I have a lot of screen space, and you can just maximize things, get things dialed in the way you need it to be, minimize them again, 
and you're set. So once you do have a few automation clips uh, created like this, you can leave those, that's no problem. Something I wanna show though, if you press control and left click to create a selection, that's a control, left click and drag. If you press control G, it will group those automation clips together. Someone also pointed out to me that this works with audio as well. You can simply select audio clips, press control G, and it will merge them all together. But something important to note is that when you merge your automation clips, if you open up your channel rack, you'll see that you still actually have the original automation clip here, which you can still access. So if you weren't happy with this for any reason, you can get rid of it and start again. Or you can press control Z to undo or control alt Z to undo many steps at a time. That's one that a lot of people miss, control alt Z and I'm not sure how many steps you can undo, but it's usually enough to sort of rectify any issues or errors you've made in the last couple of minutes. This next tip is all about giving you even more control when you want to make subtle changes with automation. So if we take a listen to what I've got here, when these drums come in here, I just want to push the volume of the instruments up a little bit and then pull them back down again, just to make them a little bit easier to notice in that section. So if I go to my instrument bus and create an automation clip, now to try and make a change on this is quite a pain. I mean, even if I zoom in a little bit, uh, left click and drag, I just want to make a very small change. That's already at 1.5 dB, just that tiny little change there. The reason that making a small change in an automation clip can actually make quite a big change on say a fader is because the bottom of the automation clip is minus infinity and the very top is 5.6 dB or plus 5.6 dB. So we've got this entire range to work with. So of course, if you make a small change, it might actually result in quite a large change here. What we can do to change this is change the minimum and maximum values of the automation clip. And that is accessed here. So if I push this minimum up and the maximum down, you'll see that the minimum value is minus 16.2 and the maximum is only minus three. So this is you know, a little bit arbitrary. We can set these exact. So if I set this back to zero, that's just a middle click for anyone who's wondering. Uh, center click on the mouse, we'll take it back. Right click, copy value. If I go back into here, paste that minimum value there. So now the minimum is set to zero dB. Let's just check that. The minimum value here, we're at zero dB. And then let's push it up just by one dB. Copy that value and then paste that into the maximum. And now this entire uh, automation clip only changes the fader from zero to one dB. So this is great. If I make this a smooth point here, you can see that a big change on the automation clip is making a tiny change on the fader. And this is essential for mastering. Sometimes you want to just push uh, a few stems or the whole chorus up just by a quarter of a dB or half a dB and being able to change the limits, I call this range limiting the automation clip, means that you can do this so easily and you can control these curves and these sort of volume ramp ups and downs. And the last tip is all about deleting automation clips properly. So if you remove it from the playlist with a right click, that hasn't got rid of it of course. If you delete it from the channel rack, you press a right click, delete. This has got rid of the automation, but unfortunately, when you, uh, I'll solo this in here, You'll notice when I change the value, it just keeps jumping back to zero dB, no matter what I do. If you right click on either the fader or it could be the control in an EQ or a reverb, whichever uh, parameter you've been automating, if you right click and select delete initial value, that just removes that there and you're good to carry on mixing or producing or adding another automation clip just as you were before. This is something that bothers a lot of people. I get a lot of comments, questions, and even emails about this, this sort of sticky value. They say all oh, the value is stuck no matter what they do to it. It's just as simple as right click, delete initial value. So that's everything for today. Let me know if you found the video helpful. And as always, let me know what sort of videos you want to see in the comments section down below. I've been reading all the comments in the previous couple of videos, and it's really helping to shape the sort of content that you want to see and what I'll be making moving forward. So thank you very much for all those suggestions. And I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.